We're talking with Bishop T.D. Jakes and his daughter, Sarah Henson, about being present in your child's life, even when it is difficult. Uh, and I want to pick up on the point where you talked about being honest with uh, your, your child, with your son, as it relates to what you had to go through. And it's interesting how a lot of times we don't want to have that conversation of the difficulty of raising a child with our children, especially when we have them in an early age. Sure. So, so speak to that in terms of uh, what you will say and also the advice you would give to somebody who's watching who would say, you know what, I hear you, but my life might be different. Well, I think the beauty, I have a blog and through my blog, I've been able to speak with different women and girls about being raised and some of the difficulties that come with it. And I think that we make sex and we make marriage and relationships so mysterious. And I think that that strikes a curiosity in children. And I think that it's important that we're honest with them about sex, about relationships, about marriage, so that it doesn't become something that they're so interested in because no one's talking about it. Well, you can come home. We can talk about it here. It'll feel good and all those other things. But it's not that time. And I think that there is a level of transparency that as a parent I can have with him that says this is the consequence of doing things this way. Bishop, how do you tell someone that we did everything we were supposed to do? We said everything we were supposed to do. Did you second, did you second guess yourself? Did we miss something? Oh, did absolutely. we skip something? Absolutely, without question. And as well you should. You should not be exempt from the process and assume that the child made the mistake independent of you. I think that in the process of elimination, you have to consider and go back through your life and say, what could I have done differently that would have made this better? You can't sink into the abyss of blaming yourself because children today at earlier ages have their own mindsets and make their own choices. So it's not about who do I blame for this, but what can I learn from this? And the, the other thing that I think is important to understand is this, the way we define family in the Jake's family is that we are a support group to each other unconditionally. I don't care. I cannot imagine anything my child would ever do that would make me desert them. I cannot imagine it. I don't care what they do. I want to pick up on something you said. You, you said the mistake. And when I've seen other conversations, folks have said, wait a minute, my child wasn't a mistake. That wasn't the case. Uh, we've seen the examples where, uh, we, that, where folks have had at, with kids 13, 14, 15, big baby showers and things along those lines where there's a big celebration. Mm -hmm. And so what do you say to someone who says that, Bishop, how dare you say a mistake? Oh, I didn't say the baby was a mistake. I said that she made a mistake. See, we have to separate who a person is from what they do. Mm -hmm. See, just because you did a bad thing doesn't make you a bad person. No, no. And, and, and for me, when push came to shove, I wanted her to know that if I get pushed on this, I got you. No matter what. No matter what. I might be working at Wendy's. But we'll be together. You understand? Right. I don't know why Bishop tripping. You'd probably be on the windows. <laughs> All right. I, wanna, I got a question right here. Step on <laughs> What's your question? I, I, got, I got it. All right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my question is, I actually grew up with my father in my household, and he and my parents were together until I was 16. So I was used to having a father around and didn't even realize it was a big deal until I got to college. And a lot of my homeboys and other girlfriends didn't have their fathers. And I feel like we've talked a lot about, you know, people not having their fathers in the household and knowing that there's seven out of ten black families that don't have that father. What are we doing and what do we need to do in order to make more fathers in the black community stay in the household so we don't continue to repeat the cycle? Because if you don't have a father, most of the times you don't know how to be a father Absolutely. later on. Absolutely. That's one of the things we'll be also dealing with later in the show. I bet you can go and speak to that right now. Well, there are a lot of things. First of all, thank you for the question. It's a great question. We have to take parenting more seriously. You have to raise a boy with responsibility at early ages. He, he can't wait till he's 20 and then run into responsibility. He needs to know at early ages that he has responsibility. What work he is, what duties are, what responsibilities are. You, you ought to, he's in training from three forward 
to be a man. Girls get trained about being a wife all through the process. They play house, they play with dolls, they get ready for it. Boys have no training. We're out there like playing shoot 'em ups and playing computers and Nintendo. And Mary takes us by surprise. We have to change that in our society. I'm telling you, you all got 20 years of experience on us. We have to fix that. Next question. Yes, Bishop. Uh, I grew up uh, an athlete. Um, grew up in the eastern part of Texas, Longview, Texas. Um, when my name was in the paper, when I did something good, Dad was there. But when I did something bad, I had a child when I graduated. My child was my graduation present. Uh, but when something bad came, Dad wasn't there. You couldn't answer the phone. Mama never talked down about Dad, never said anything negative. She let me build that own, my own relationship with him. When I got older, one thing I tell my dad and I tell everybody else, it's never too late to be involved in your child's life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 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 And the other thing that's very, very important is that men need to be able to talk to other men to understand how to react to certain situations. Uh, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And I think that helps men to respond more appropriately when the child goes awry. A lot of men know how to handle the child, but they don't know how to handle the public pressure. We are talking about this because she's ready to talk about it. Until she got ready to talk about it, I kept every secret in my lips. And, and having those kinds of values, I had people who challenged me and criticized me and wanted me to kind of out her. She's my daughter. And I stood by her. And when she's emotionally prepared to deal with that, then I'm right by her side to do that. And having those kinds of values and somebody you can talk to who's been through it before helps other men. We as men have got to learn how to talk more and communicate with each other. I think Go ahead. part of that also is being an authentic man has you have a certain level of love and respect for yourself that anything connected to you, you wouldn't just throw away. And I do think that our men need to feel love and they need to know about respecting themselves and it would be more difficult to see a part of you be needing you when you're not there. And that's also one of the reasons why why we're trying to drive this point home because when you lay with someone and they get pregnant it is a consequence of your actions. Absolutely. And the point is that child is here and you, you don't throw the child away. Right. So just like when you were going through your situation and Bishop Jakes was there for you as daddy, the other point is uh, when that child is born, that young boy or that young man has to say, wait a minute, I've got to step up and realize this is now my responsibility and I can't throw it away because there are consequences to throwing it away and leaving and not being there, not being involved. Absolutely. Next question. Okay. I got it. I got it. I was, I was brought Next up. Next question. I was brought up in the home without my father. My my dad separated. I was young, maybe three, four. And see my mother abused with my dad, um, it caused me to um, look for love in the wrong way as well. And I got molested between eight and nine years old, sexually molested family member, and ended up dating guys and um, getting sexual abuse myself. Got pregnant about 19, 20 years old, my son, father, and he um, sexually abused me. And he was never part of my son's life. My son is 17 now, and he just met him for the first time like two years ago. And got involved with another guy and got sexual abuse real bad. This one with two girls, and they're 15 years old now. But through it all, raising a parent, being independent, and got married like 10 years ago to an awesome husband that loves me and my children. But just everything that I've been through... You know, it's hard to raise them because they, they feel as though, Mama, you raising us like this because of what you went through. So as a parent, how am I supposed to let them recognize that it's not about what I've been through. It's about protecting them so they wouldn't have to go through what I went through. And I, I'm so attached to them and I can't like I can't seem to let go. First of all, children are mean and they go for the jugular. When you don't do what they want you to do and they know you're sensitive about your past, they will use it as an attack method. Let me tell you something. I don't care what they say. Stick to your guns. Stick to your guns. Stick to your guns. I mean, they're going to punch you right in the gut because they know you're sensitive about it. They're going to say that, especially in those adolescent years. But you have to lose uh, the pain of your past. 
You have to let the pain go and say, you, you know that your judgment is stronger and fuller and more mature. And no matter what they say, don't let that be a sensitive issue in your life. Talk openly about it. Never hide it. Be forthright about it. And when it comes up, take that punch, turn your head and say, you're still not going out tonight. Because we haven't, <laughs> I think when we're young, we haven't really lived long enough to have a past, so we don't know what that means. So it's not something they're doing on purpose. They just haven't lived long enough to know any better. So try not to take it to heart because it is a part of you. See how she balanced that out for me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sarah and Bishop Gates, we certainly want to thank both of you for sharing the personal story uh, with us here on TV One. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.